Well, just a few months ago, big tech tested, tested its powers by blacklisting Alex Jones from every major tech platform all at once. No one really said anything about it because Alex Jones, ew, we're not allowed to like him. We're supposed to think it's okay that he's deplatformed. So, of course, the tech oligarchs were emboldened. And if they can silence one person, why not silence more? And, of course, now they are. Jesse Kelly is a two-time congressional candidate. He hosts a radio show in Houston. Just a few months ago, he came on this show and predicted that Twitter eventually would censor him. You wrote this piece that I thought was really compelling about Alex Jones, and you said, look, I don't agree with Alex Jones's views, but that's not the point. The point, as you articulated, was if you can silence this guy because you don't like what he says, why can't they silence you or me? That's the, that is the point, Tucker, and they're coming for you and me next. Well, Kelly turned out to be right. Just this past Sunday, yesterday, Twitter shut down his account and they did not explain why. Tonight, we're trying to find out what happened. Jesse Kelly joins us live. Jesse, thanks a lot for coming on. You knew this was coming. You presciently predicted it. Why did Twitter take you off its platform? Nobody knows. Twitter kicked me off the platform because I was a mainstream voice on the right that spoke the truth, Tucker, and, and that's all anybody knows. They've given me no explanation, as they told Congress they would give explanations. I, all they sent was an email that said you are permanently banned and you can't appeal it for repeated rules violations, only I don't violate their rules. I don't cuss at people on there. I don't harass people on there. I don't do any of those ugly things that some people do. So Twitter's going to become what they are. All of a sudden, my account vanished like a Hillary Clinton email. Did you call them? To, I mean, it's not, uh, let me just say, if you're in your business or my business, that's not a small thing. I mean, that's the way, one of the ways that you communicate with your listeners one of the ways you disseminate your ideas, a main way you do. So did you call Twitter to find out? Or have any contact with them at all? No number to call. In fact, once they banished your account, it wasn't a suspension. They completely banished me, so I'm not even able to log in and email Twitter support. A friend of mine sent me a couple email addresses for people that supposedly work at Twitter, but I'm sure they're not going to answer any of those. It's They just... Uh, they did exactly what I said they would do. They came for Alex Jones first because he's a nut job and they wanted to see how the right would react. They got him and I knew they were coming for me. They'll come for you too. So when, when they did come for Alex Jones, the idea was, well, you know, you can have him because he's embarrassing and no one really said anything about it, in, a, in my opinion, in a very cowardly and stupid way. Do you think if conservatives, or not even conservatives, people who dissent from the conventional view of everything that we're now required to believe at gunpoint, if, though, if the rest of us start to complain, do you think we can push back against censorship? I think we can, and I think that's where the real power is. See, it's not a big deal that I got kicked off Twitter. It hurts Twitter worse than it hurt me because they finally kicked off somebody that woke everybody on the right up. People are now starting to realize what Twitter has become. Twitter's nothing but a platform. It's a blank piece of paper that somehow one day woke up and decided that they were the artist, that they were in control of what gets put on that piece of paper, and that's not where their power lies. So if they continue along this path, it's going to be nothing but two feminists screaming at each other because one of them accidentally found a boyfriend. Am I misunderstanding this, or do the, do the social media platforms have a congressional exemption that allows them not to be held legally responsible for things that are said on their platform. They're, in other words, they're not media companies, and they can't be sued as that's media a, companies can be sued. A, but now they're acting like media companies. How does that work? How it works is they have the best of both worlds. You have it exactly right. They are treated like media platforms, meaning they are just an open site where people can post what they want as long right. as they're not inciting violence. Only they're acting like Think Progress. They're acting like the New York Times because these radical voices on the left never get censored. Even Farrakhan, that complete scumbag that has a tweet still up comparing Jews to termites, he still has an account. But I post things about Velveeta and mine gets banished. Jesse, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Appreciate you, Tucker.